where are the oh, dollars? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible thing to say to a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could have chosen any piece of demographic information and put it on the map. Yeah. We could choose drink, beer, or wine in the last six months and put it on the map. So now we should also see where campus is. Campus <laughs> has the highest concentration of drink <laughs> beer in the last six months, yeah. which you would fully expect, right? Right. There's got to be somewhere that you can get all of this information. How much money they have? What kind of jobs do they have? What's the average household size? Whatever you want to know about these people that in any way can be quantified, you can pretty much figure it out. This is a superpower. All right, just wait. You can see male populations, 51.6% male. Where does uh, Warren Buffett live? I don't know. Psychographic information is all about how you think, and that's a whole nother level. This also seems to indicate that the more beer drinkers you have, the less you make. This makes commercial real estate fun. Now, you want to see something really, really cool? Well, welcome to Commercially Speaking. I'm Timmy Barron, ADHD. Yeah, I'm Bo Barron, CCIM. This is the podcast where Bo teaches me everything he knows about commercial real estate. You see, he's an owner and a director and a CCIM instructor, uh, managing a fund manager. Would that be? He's... We just started a fund. We're investors, essentially. But yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a fund manager, but, I suppose. Yeah, that's his world. And uh, it's not mine. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, my world is, uh, I was one of those artsy kids. Um I wanted to say, because Dad, he really liked when I was doing the car tricks. Dad did? Yeah. So yeah. as parents, he was like, I really like that you're showing off some of your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I have the piano here right now, because I want to, as sons, or just children, we want our dad to be proud of us. Yes. So I'm doing this, but a little bit reluctantly, because as a middle child, I don't just do what he wants me to do. You know. But, but you do that. like an audience. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play a game with you. I'm going to play a couple things. Uh, we did this in the Bye Bye Liver, but, you know. So, so you at home, if you're listening to this, you can put it in your comments, see if you can get it before Bo. I'm going to play you, like, a little piece of a song. You got to see if you know what it is. All right. Okay, ready? Small time girl. Living in a lonely journey. Journey. Uh, yeah. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. But yes, I, I'm giving. I would have gotten there. Yeah. yeah okay. Giving that. Yeah. To yeah, you. yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Nice. I wonder if anybody got it before you. Okay. Again, get ready with the comments. Uh, we'll do uh, at least one more. Okay. Ready? Uh huh. This one might be a little bit more obscure. I wonder if you know it. Piano Man? No. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the same artist. Okay. The same artist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's Billy. Is that uh, Benny and the Jets? No. That's Elton oh, John. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, when I was in New York City this past weekend, <gasps> Billy Joel played at the Garden. No I way. I could have gone. Oh, my gosh. You should have. Maybe I should have, but he's not my favorite. Sure. You know, so yeah. if it were Foo Fighters, I would have gone. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if it were U2, yeah. I would have gone. Right, you know? right, right. There's, there's a handful of bands. I, I would have gone by myself, but okay, <laughs> back to the song. Okay, right. Billy Joel, and it is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know the, I know, like, that's familiar, but I. Yeah, I can't even come up with words. Yeah. Anthony works in the grocery store, okay. saving his pennies for someday. Yeah, see, the. It's a little, yeah. The melody lands like that's familiar but i don't yeah i don't think i could like break into the song what's Fair the enough, what's the would. it's called anthony's song anthony's song yeah, yeah i never would come uh, up uh, with that such waste of time what's I'm the moving out doom, doom. okay yeah. i'm moving out ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, 
Nice. I think, yeah, two songs is good. No, give me one another? more. Okay. Give me one more. Ready? Mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of rings a bell, but no. I see you drive around town, around town with the girl I love, uh, and I'm like, <laughs> forget you, forget you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. CeeLo Green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget you. That by itself just didn't. It didn't land. It didn't trigger that for me. So yeah, yeah. Pity the fool. Falls in love with you. Oh no. See the gold nigga. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, got some news for you. Yeah. Okay, cool. That was fun. Hopefully that was fun for you. Yeah, we might have to do that again. Maybe I can do a little better job. Yeah, and same with me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll come in not yeah. being like, oh, I know these songs so well. <laughs> um cool. Market analysis. Mm-hmm. Let them know real quick what we're doing. Oh, yeah. So we decided a handful of episodes ago to, uh, we're going to do an episode coming up with, oh, there's the hat. There's the hat, baby. And we're going to do a market analysis. Uh, We talked a lot about it, how to do it, different parts of a market analysis. We talked about the four feasibility studies for the strategic analysis model and all these different things. We talked about economic base analysis and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd- I'll link all those in the, they're some of our first episodes. They're great. And we thought we would uh, give all of you an opportunity to submit markets, and we draw those markets from a hat Mm -hmm. and uh, do a market analysis. And we got several in so far. Yep, and we have a couple more. We have a couple more we're throwing in the hat, and today we are going to draw. At the very end of the episode, we're going to draw. We're going to draw your city, and that's the one we're going to do a market analysis of in a couple episodes. So the ones that we're adding, I'm I'm not going to do a recap of these. There's a lot. Um, Scott Carlin says Melbourne, Palm Bay, T- Titusville, Titusville, Florida, <laughs> MSA. So that is going in. Thank you, Scott, for leaving that. Okay. Next one we got uh, Donna or Dana Truman, Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Portland, okay. Maine. So I wonder that's, how big Portland, Maine is. We're going to draw this at the end of this episode. So yeah. look forward to that. Well, what are you teaching me today? Well, oh, you I just came back from New York too. I did. I came back from New York. I got, oh, you know what I meant to do? What? I just made a big boo boo. Okay, so I go I've to New made York. A huge mistake. There was this commercial real estate X gala, gala. Is it gala or gala? <laughs> I think it's gala. Gala. Okay, I'd, we'll go in with college. Gala. Yeah, my friends, we'd always be like, come to my gala. <laughs> So it's always in my head when Gala is sad. I'm like, oh, it's a gala. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Inside joke. So Bob Knackle and uh, uh, Strip Mall Guy, mm-hmm. who's an anonymous uh, Twitter account, they threw a big gala on the 101st floor of a downtown office building in Manhattan. Nice. And uh, I didn't make it for that. I had a conflict. But the next day, our friends at the Trepwire podcast yeah. threw an after party. Ooh, woo. At their office in the Rockefeller Center, which is sixth, seventh floor, and it overlooks the ice skate rink and where they do the big uh, Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Yeah. And so they have the whole floor and they have this big mezzanine space, this outside space that you can go out. And it was a beautiful day in New York. It's perfect to be outside on the mezzanine. Just a little bit of a chill in the air. You know, it's landscaped out there and, you know, you could. You could put 200 people out there in this yeah. mezzanine. It's a good good amount of space. And you go over to this row of hedges at the end, and you look you look down, and and there's there's Rockefeller Plaza. That's amazing. That cool. So you can see where they do the concerts in the street uh-huh. at the Today Show in the mornings. Yeah. Like, you can look down on, on that. And it, it was just, uh, it was really cool. That's so cool. And so a lot of the people that attended the gala – we're at the after party, and so I got to go to the after party, and and uh, Lonnie Hendry, our friend uh, from the Trepwire podcast, and friend of the show, yeah, got to meet Haley Keen, who is on their podcast as well. Haley. So she was a voice 
you know, yeah. and, and I got to, got to meet her in person, which is great. Got to meet a lot of other folks, uh, that I'd known online forever. Yeah. Like commercial real estate community and Twitter really started probably back in 2010, 2011, something right. like yeah. that. And there were some of us that were part of that community from, from the jump. Like one of them is Coy Davidson in Houston. He's an office medical uh, guy. And so first time ever I met him in real life. And that's so cool. And there's a podcaster in Canada who does, uh, he just does industrial. His podcast is about industrial real estate. Uh, Chad Griffiths. Uh, matter of fact, we'll, we were talking about doing a collaboration, maybe doing a joint episode yeah. where we'll both kind of push the same episode out and, yeah. and maybe even do that um, with Lonnie as well. So uh, got to meet him for the first time in real life. And so it was just really neat getting to, to meet a lot of these folks that I'd known online for years. Yeah. Um, Did you, was strip mall guy there? He, I don't think he was at the after party cause I still don't know. He who or he she, is. I know like that, that was like, I think I know his first name now, but that doesn't, that yeah. doesn't really help. So he could have been there, but yeah, he could have been there. You could have talked uh, to him. Steven Bushbaum, the other host of the Trepwire podcast. Steve. He was there and I got to meet him. Uh, but I got us Trepwire t-shirts. You did? They gave us t-shirts and I, my intent for today was for us to wear the Trepwire podcast t-shirts. Ah, oh, we'll do it on and Friday. I, so yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it on the next one. So oh, that's stay awesome. tuned. Uh, I bet they're comfy. They're nice shirt. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Bright blue. I love the blue. Oh so, yeah. It was, uh, it was good. Uh, so yeah, I got to do that. Something annoying happened to me though in the last couple of weeks. I meant to bring it up on a previous episode, but I'm selling one of, uh, some of our properties. Mm hmm. As part of that process, I had somebody reach out and they made an offer, uh, expressed interest, just cold called me and uh, started talking to him. And then I had somebody else cold called me on the same property. And I was like, well, I'm already, I've already put together all this information on the properties. I'll send it to this guy too. And maybe you'll see what they're interested in. And then I thought, well, there's one other person in town who um, has some properties like this who might be interested. So I called that guy up. And he's like, ooh, I'd have interest for sure. So mm -hmm. I sent him the same information. So ended up in the period of a couple of days having, you know, three prop parties that were interested in, in taking a look and got uh, got three offers. Nice. And the local guy was the one I thought of. He gave me by far the lowest offer, a couple million dollars lower than the well, other yeah, two. Yeah, y'all know each other, right? And That's I was, huge. That's pretty big, right? It was right? a lot, yeah. And, and I was... He started asking for just all this information. It was going to be some work for me. And I was like, before we go that far, mm -hmm. why don't you give me a feel for what you're thinking? And so he told me, and I was like, man, it's way off. You yeah. Know? And we got off the phone, and he sent me a text. And uh, it just said, buy low, sell high, ha, ha. Can't fault me for trying, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that is a mindset for an investor that will – not do you any favors. Mm. He he's either got to find the biggest fool who doesn't understand the value of his property. He's got to take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice guy. Yeah. So like that really doesn't fit his profile. And if it does, then I don't know him like I think I do. Yeah. Or Could be he's just gonna side. buy crap. Mm. Because every time you buy something, you pay more than anybody else that's interested in it, or that or it wouldn't get sold to you. Yeah. I mean, it's more than just about price, but that's the biggest factor. Sure. You know? And so I was just thinking, man, I would encourage the investors out there to not just try to steal properties, buy low, sell high. You do generally, and it's very cliche, you make your money on the buy. What's that? What that's really talking about is it's what you do with the property after you buy it. Mm -hmm. That's what creates wealth, creates cash flow, creates value. If you have to buy something dirt cheap, then you're probably not a great operator. And so anyway, that I thought I'd just throw it there as a reminder. I think That's we did great. a whole episode on this before, but it was, uh, I think it's really great. Something that just happened to me. And yeah, and I was it's just a like, good reminder. Man. You ready for the question? Oh, I'm ready. All right, Bo, what are you teaching me today? I'm going to demonstrate for you one of the tools that I use. Well, let me ask you. Yeah. What, what drives demand in commercial real estate? Space. People. 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 Mm -hmm. People. And what single thing drives population growth? 
drives population growth. Uh, jobs? Jobs. Ah. More jobs, more people. More people, more demand for space. Mm-hmm. And if there's more demand for space, then you got, you're got going to need more office. You're going to need more retail. You're going to need more industrial. You're going to need more brokers. residential. You're going to need more <laughs> brokers and all that stuff. So when we talk about all of these market analysis topics, it's generally focused on jobs because that's what moves the needle with population, which creates more demand for space. Okay. So where do you quantify? Where do you get your data for the demand side of the equation? Like when you're studying a market, different things drive demand for the different property types. For instance, total employment drives demand for office. I think we did a whole episode on this. Mm -hmm. Total employment and total population drive demand for industrial space. Okay. Mm -hmm. For retail... It's all about disposable income. So you don't care as much about how many people are there. You care about how many dollars are in a particular market. For multifamily or or residential housing, however you want to uh, define it, it's not even the total population. You have to translate that into households. Yeah. Like my wife and I and my two kids at home and those two dogs that we have, we don't need multiple housing units. We need one. Right. Right. So you have to translate total population into how many households are in a place. And that varies from market to market. So there's got to be somewhere that you can get all of this information on the demand side that talk about the people, Mm -hmm. how much money they have, what kind of jobs do they have? Is there projected growth? What's the average household size? What's the average household income? All of that information that we use to analyze demand. Where do you get all that information? Yeah, where do you get all that information? I've well, been asking that since day one. Well, Wait, how do you know this? And you're like, well, that's just the number. <laughs> You've told me a few, but yeah, okay. Sh- you're, that's what you're showing me. Well, let me show you. Okay. This is the site to do business. Site to do business. STDB.com. If you're a CCIM member, a candidate or a, design, uh, or a designee, mm-hmm. you get site to do business. It's part of what the Institute provides. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. If you're not a CCIM, like if you see what we, what we do here today and you're like, ooh, I want me some of that, you don't have to be a member of the CCIM Institute. You can go to, oh, subscribe now. It's $1,700 a year, okay? Or with a little training, it's $200 more, okay? okay? That's not a lot per year for a tool this powerful. Okay. If anybody watching wants access to this and to be able to do exactly what I'm about to show you, which is really just scratching the surface on what the site to do business can do. You can do it. You don't have to be a member of the CCIM Institute, though I will tell you, the annual dues for the CCIM Institute are well under $1,000. Ah. So like, well, right, yeah. why would you get one without becoming a member of the Institute? I don't know, but anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff here with site to do business. It's more than just the business analyst, which is the actual tool that I'm going to show you. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, that's included here. I'm not going to go through all that, but let's jump into the business analyst. What this is, is a mapping tool. Oh, okay. And it allows you to take demographics. You know what I mean when I say demographics? Yeah, like types of people, uh, th- like different categories of It is people? the quantitative measures that describe the people in an area. The numbers. I was right. Like <laughs> <laughs> a qu- Quantitative, yeah, yeah. gotcha. It's the quantitative information, like how many people live there? Mm -hmm. What's their average age? What's their age distribution? What's their average household income? What's their average per capita income? What's their blah, 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 blah. Like all that stuff you can pull. And the first thing that you have to do to do any of that is you have to define the geography that you're going to use. And there's two types. You can use formal geographies or functional geographies. Formal geographies are, they tell you what they are, like they say. You, mm. know, you know they. You know who they are. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the state the, of Kentucky, or I should say the Commonwealth of Kentucky, is a formal geography. They tell us what the borders are. Okay. Right? Davis County, Kentucky, where we live, that's a formal geography. Zip codes are formal geography. Census tracts, they're all formal geographies. They have boundaries that they say. Those are the boundaries. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's formal geography. They is not the people. They is the, the powers man. that be. Yeah, yeah the, the man. man. Right? 
Now, on the other side of that Ms. are Mullins, the... Mullins, you're the man. <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Remember yeah. that from School of Rock? Okay. So on the other side, <laughs> you have functional geographies. And this is where you, as the analyst, get to choose your own geography. You decide. Mm. So formal geographies, they say. Functional geographies, you decide. So you could drop a pin on a map. I want you to start here, and I want a three-mile radius around that site. Gotcha. Right? That would be a functional geography. Yeah. You can say, I want a 15-minute drive time around this site. Right? That ends up looking like uh, somebody spilled ink on a map. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Um, you could do uh, donut holes. Right? So you, you could do uh, like three different rings and just get the data on that outside ring oh. and not include the center or wow. just do the center. Like you have all kinds, you can just draw on a map. Mm. It's called a polygon. You draw your own shape and it'll pull whatever information you want. Yes. And it's almost, uh, it's almost all demand side information. It's about the people and wow. the quantity, the quantitative descriptions of those people. Holy moly. Education <laughs> level. All, I mean, whatever you want to know about these people that in any way can be quantified, you can pretty much figure it out. So, wow, give me a market. Just pick one. In fact, let me, uh, let me ask you a question. Sure. If you weren't going to live in Chicago mm -hmm. or Owensboro, mm -hmm. all right, and you had to go move somewhere else with your family, oh. where would you go? There's well, the first place that came to mind that wasn't like New York or LA, like we're actors or whatever. But I think, and this is going to surprise Tara, I think. Um, does this only do the United States, by the way? No. Oh, you can pull it from anywhere. From anywhere. However, yeah. the For this quality we'll and the depth of the data has everything to do with what that government collects and what Esri, which is the the demographer company mm -hmm. that that this is all built on, what yeah. they can access. Gotcha. So when I went and taught in Puerto Rico, I got to show them all these cool things. Except their amount of data they can pull on Puerto Rico, like no. the mapping stuff works the same, but it's like it's like a shallow puddle. Gotcha. Compared to the depth of the ocean that we can access in the United States, so the so it differs from country to country. But I could go up here. And I'm just curious about Ireland because Ireland would be um, like outside of Dublin, but you could put Dublin. That might have the most. So here's Dublin. Yeah, if we zoom into Dublin, there's a there's a place I can't think of the name. Uh, well, I'm just gonna yeah. okay. I'm gonna drop a pin right here and just see. Well, what let's data. see what see what uh, Ireland. So there's my pin right there. Okay, now I'm gonna create the site, and so I can do rings, drive time, or even walk time. But let's do drive time, and let's do. 10, 20, and 30 minute drive times. So these are donut rings? Uh, no, these are, these will look like uh, spilled ink. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does. That's cool. So it's factoring in traffic, it's factoring in roadways. And then I can go to reports, and this is where we'll find out what kind of data. Esri has access to, and this has everything, almost everything to do with what uh, the government Ireland co collects. Yeah. So, okay, we've got very, very little. I've got a summary report, a site map, and satellite imagery. Okay, so we've got almost nothing okay, on let's, Ireland. Uh, I'll tell you what so, I was going to say. And so let's just stick with the United States. Yeah. Let me move back to the U.S. here. I'm, I'm curious to see if you have any idea what I'm going to say. I would say Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say Boulder, Colorado. Boulder, yeah. okay. I If you made me move somewhere, uh, Colorado would make the list. Oh, wow. For sure. Yeah. I love the mountains. Yeah. can't Couldn't care less about the beach, but I love the mountains. Okay, so Boulder it is. Boulder, Colorado, USA. So, boom. There's Boulder. All right. This is fun. And let's... Um, Let's create a site and let's, again, let's do, uh, we'll just do 5, 10, and 15 minutes, what it defaults to. Now, if we wanted, see how I click more options? Mm -hmm. We're doing 5, 10, and 15 minutes driving away from the pin. Okay. We could also change it to do going towards the pin. I could factor in traffic and we could use either live traffic, what's happening right now, 
or I could say what's typical at, you know, six hours from now. So, you know, it's noon there. So rush hour traffic, you know, five hours from now or traffic based on, you know, you can use all this, but I'm gotcha. just, but like let's the just drive keep, away or toward could be different based on. Oh, sure. Right. Okay. The, the, Have you ever are, driven out yeah. of Nashville to yeah. come home on Friday afternoon? Yeah. What are you doing? You're a parking lot. Yeah. But everybody coming the other direction yeah, yeah. is just zooming by and you're, yeah. Yep. So it, it will do that. Gotcha. So let's click apply and it's going to put, there's five, 10 and 15 minutes. In Boulder, Colorado. Now, it looks like there's something right here. What do you think that is? There's in, a bit of a lag. Whoa. In this void right here. Oh, a mountain? I would assume it, there's a mountain there and that the city is kind of built around, around the, mountain. the mountain. Yeah. That's what that looks like. Yeah. So let's just run some reports. I'm just going to give you a feel for some of the really, really easy demographics that you can do. Okay. I mean, it's like, how long did it take us to create our, our geography? I used functional geography, and I said I wanted a drive time, 5, 10, 15 minutes. All right, so here's all my reports. I mean, we had five in Ireland. And wow. So, look, I can get pets and products, market potential, huh. net worth profile, medical expenditures, market profile, housing profile, all this stuff. But I generally start with two right off the bat. I want to see the executive summary. High-level demographic report. It's quick, easy. Let's just run this one first. And I can get it as a PDF, or I can get it as an Excel spreadsheet. Whoa. Uh, this, is, this is a superpower. Oh, just wait. Okay. This is the this is the basics. So I'm going to hit run report. It's going to take about three seconds. One, two, three. Open report and. What well, did take three seconds? Here's five, ten, fifteen minutes. You have 2010, 2020, 2023 population. So right now, within five minute drive time, there's thirty six thousand six hundred nine people. Okay. Ten minutes, one hundred five. 15 minutes, 140,000 people. Wow. Right? We can see the annual growth rate. You can see male population. It's 51.6% male. Wow. Median age is 25. That's really young. Within a five-minute drive time. Of, of that, downtown? Of that pin. Wherever that it pin. put the pin. Yeah. I don't, I don't know where it is. As you get further out, the median age Wow, that's goes, young. It's really young. Now, let's just review real quick. Okay. You understand what average means yes and another word for average is what uh the amalgamation uh, i mean i'm looking for a term mean mean m-e-a-n means mm. average so if somebody asks you for a mean uh -huh. of a data set they're asking you for the average oh okay oh so i didn't know that yeah it's okay. just another term i've mean, just been doing this mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> You mean. Yeah. In, okay. In Arabic, I always, uh, the word for right is you mean. You mean. <laughs> and so I always remember, like, if I were going to be mean, I would throw a punch with my right hand. Ah. Oh. You mean. Means you mean. right. That's how I remembered that. So, <clears throat> yasar, okay. yasar is left. And if I threw a, a left hook, it'd be pretty sorry. Yasar. <laughs> so, that's how I remember right and left in Arabic. <laughs> I'm surprised I still remember that, but yeah. that's why... Word associations work. Huge. Okay. So just just looking at population, all right? So race and ethnicity, all right? It's 81% white uh, within five minutes, uh, different um, oh, wow. households, all right? The 2023 wealth index is 115, okay? The United States average is 100. So 115 would be 15% more wealth than... United States on average. What, okay. Yeah, but what's the, what is, like, does that equate to dollars? No. Yeah. Whatever the like, whatever the average is across the United States, that's what 100 is. Oh, okay. And this five-minute drive time, this 36,609 people, yeah. their wealth is 15% higher okay. than 100, 100. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Now you can see households. Okay, so we saw population before. Now we see households. And average household size here is 2.12. So if there's 36,609 people, mm -hmm. then how many households are there? You would divide that by 2.12, and it Nearly would be right? 13,528. Yeah. 
You can also see mortgage income. So what's the percent of income spent on mortgage? 100%. What? That can't be right. What? Percent of income for mortgage. I've never seen 100%. That can't be right. That could have been. That could be an error, right? You know, I've never really seen an error in the Esri data. It could just be a function of these people are living way beyond their means. Right. I mean, they're like 25-year-olds. There's an average of two people per house. You know, you know what I mean? Like, with that kind of data, it's like they're spending... If I see something that sticks out at me like that, yeah, that creates a question that I have to go investigate and answer. Okay. So what I'd probably do is look up who are my CCIM contacts in Boulder, Colorado? And I'd call them up and say, hey, look, I'm looking at your market. Yeah. I ran across this stat. Do you agree with that? Are you using this when you do a market analysis? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So whenever we do a market analysis, we're oh, going to yeah. be doing this with yep. somebody's. Oh, Absolutely. I see. So, this so is Boulder's sort of, getting a freebie. Uh, well, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 They are getting. I mean, if you want to, anybody can probably, you can probably Google 2023 median household income for Boulder, Colorado, and probably come up with something like that. But yeah, okay. You can see that their annual household income is expected to, uh, in the next five years, to go up 5.75%. Um, so here's the difference between median and, oh, this is what we were talking about before. Average is mean, mm -hmm. right? Those are equate. Median is different. Median is the center of the data set. Yeah, okay. Like the median in a highway. Right. So when you look at median household income of 64,166, that means half of the people in that five-minute drive time have incomes higher than that and half have incomes lower than that. Yeah, okay. All right? But the average household income is 124,000, almost 125,000. So what's that tell you? There are some really, 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 really rich people. Yep. In There's that some area. big, big earners. Right. In that area. Yeah. Because that average, wow. For the so median, the, oh, wow. Yeah. Now think about this. Where does uh, Warren Buffett live? I don't know. Like Middle America. I forget where. You can tell okay. us in the comments. I should know. I just can't think where of it right now. Where does Warren Buffett live? He lives in Alice. like. Nebraska oh, or Oklahoma or someplace like that. Yeah. And if you looked at his town and got the average ha household income, like that number is going to be huge. Right, right. Right. So a lot of retailers especially like to use median household income mm -hmm. because it takes the outliers out of the equation. Sure. And so. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, per capita income. The Gini index I've never seen before. That's new, and I don't know what that is. G-I-N-I? -I? Here, mm -hmm. look it up. Okay. But then you have housing, all right? So how many housing units there are? This is actually some supply data. Uh, you don't get much supply data from site to do business, but there's some. And it tells us in 2023, there's total housing units of 14,704 within that five-minute drive time. Owner occupies 5,000 and some change. Renter occupies 8,000 and some change. Mm. So 44% um, of the total amount of housing units are renter occupied. What are you thinking? I'm just reading down here. Oh. Currently 49.4% of the 61,717 housing units. This is using the 15 minute drive time down here. Yeah. So. In a 15-minute drive time, over half are owners, 44.1% are renters. So if I wanted to know, you know, if we could calculate new job growth. Right. If they're basic jobs, do the economic base multiplier, see how many new jobs there's going to be, how many total new jobs there's going to be, how many, what kind of population increase there's going to be, we can project that. Mm -hmm. And then we can look at household size, 2.12, yeah. and figure out, how many housing households they're going to be. Yeah. And then we can figure out, well, 44.1% of them are going to be renters. Mm. Therefore, how many apartments are needed? Yeah. So you can start to quantify demand that way and see if there's a demand gap where we'd need more supply. Yep. So that is the, that's the executive summary, the most basic thing. That's what that is. Yeah. And that's where you start. Yep. You now... I also like to run the business summary 
So let's, let's run that one. I'll just give you a feel for that report. This gives us all the business information. And it does it by SIC code or NAICS code. Now, SIC code was how you'd classify businesses before NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, where United States and Canada and Mexico created a free trade agreement. When they did that, they created the NAICS codes, North American Industrial Classification System. Those include Canada and Mexico. So I generally don't look at SIC codes anymore. But what this will tell you is within five minutes, there's 3,095 businesses with 52,493 total employees. All right, now notice this, 52,000 total employees within a five-minute drive time. Hmm. So in the daytime, there's 52,000 people working down there. If you're a restaurant downtown, do you care about more who lives there or works there works. during the day? Works. Works. So that total employees within five miles, that's your daytime population. And that's the number you want to use. Oh. The people that live there don't mean as much. It's how many people are there during the day. Oh, holy cow. Yep. Now, let's keep rolling. Okay. And that's way you can put more put your people. logo on the top left. Yeah, you can upload your logo. And so, oh, so like if you present this to somebody or show it to them. Yeah, it's my logo instead of Esri's logo. Right. Even though it's their data. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see. Oh, that's cool. Source, copyright, Esri, you know, et cetera. Yeah. But. That's cool. Okay. You get the total information. And then it breaks it down by SIC codes and NAICS codes. Let's go to NAICS codes, all right? And let's just say in manufacturing, there are 46 manufacturing businesses within that five-minute drive time, making up 1.5% of the businesses, and they employ 522 people, all right? So I can see what types of businesses are there mm -hmm. and how many people they employ. Wow. Which really can tell you a lot because if I'm trying to figure out office demand, I don't care about manufacturing jobs. Right. I'm going to ignore those. But when I look down here to maybe information jobs or finance and insurance, well, they almost all use office space. So there's 190 of those within five miles employing 1,366 people, right? Mm -hmm. Professional scientific and tech services, 534 businesses. That's by far their biggest amount. Wow. So this is a very tech heavy, professional, scientific and tech, legal, uh, 7,400. So 17% of the businesses and 14% of the employees fall into this. And those are office users. So my guess is that our pin has dropped downtown. And my guess is like most downtowns, it has more office space than anything else. Mm -hmm. That would make sense here. And so you can just see how many employees you have, what types of businesses they are. Are those types of businesses giving you demand for office, demand for industrial space, demand for retail, demand, demand for restaurants, demand for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And office is still a hazy category, right? Yeah, office cool. is still a challenge yeah, for yeah. sure. All right, let's jump back to the map. Let me know when you see the map. See it. Okay. Now, I, you can see I just gave you a smidge of – the demographic data, the, the quantitative measures mm. of the people who are there. And you can start to see how you could quantify some demand. It even gives you some like projection data. Okay. But there are some other pretty cool things that you can, um, you can pull and it has nothing or very little to do with demographics. You can also get psychographics. Have you ever heard of psychographics? Mm -mm. The difference between demographics and psychographics, demographics are what is factually and quantitatively true about the people who live there. Their age, their income, their education level, all that stuff. It's factually true. You can quantify it. Yes. Right? Psychographic information is all about how you think and behave, how you see the world. That's psychographic data, ah. and that's a whole nother level. And let me give you an example of this. I'm going to pull the tapestry segmentation area profile. Before I do that, I'm going to change my geography and simplify. How do you spell psychographics? Is it P-S-Y? Yes. Like, oh, yeah, because it's psychology. Yeah. Psychographic. So, That would be a good name for an improv team. 
So North Campus, main campus in North Boulder Creek. I'm going to drop a pin right there on campus. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to create a site of drive time, and I just want 10 minutes. And I'm just kind of pulling numbers oh, out. Oh, you could do walk time, too. Could yeah, do walk okay, time. Cool. So there's our... 10 minute and boulder has is that where the university of colorado is is that in boulder i don't know yeah there's probably a location so university of california yeah, maybe boulder. yeah okay Pro, i'm sure there is and beamer could tell us he used to live in boulder right right yep. yeah when you were look when we're looking at the science and tech i was like oh yeah because that beamer was doing beamer, that kind of stuff when he was right. there that's right i'd forgotten about that so let's run a report we just changed our geography. We're going to run a report just like we did before. I'm going to scroll down here to Tapestry Segmentation Area Profile. I'm going to click Run Report. So what Tapestry's segmentation does is it puts people in category based on their beliefs and behaviors and, and that kind of thing. Oh, okay. So if you took a 40-year-old couple that lived in the Bible Belt who made $100,000 a year and had three children who both had master's degrees... And you took a forty-year-old couple with a couple kids, hundred thousand dollars, household income, master's degree in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Demographically, the numbers are going to tell you the same story. Yeah. Yeah. But psychographically, they could be completely different. Right. You could have F one hundred and fifty driving, church going folks, and you could have Prius and Teslas over here, and yep. they're going to vote one way, they're going to vote another way, they're right. going to buy from uh, you know the IGA, Hobby they're going to buy from Whole Foods, right. yeah. you know how they behave. So there's all kinds of different tapestry segmentation profiles that tell you, all right, who are these people? Yeah. And what we did here when we ran this report is it's giving us our top five segmentations. You have urban chic. <laughs> that's 23.3%. You have dorms to diplomas. That's 18.5%. Emerald City, Metro Renters, College Towns. Who now, names these? I think Esri created the tapestry profiles. It's like the demographer that all the... All the data they collect is what this is all built on. Yeah, but like urban chic is, you know. But let's. I'm going to click on dorms to diplomas because I dropped this near on the campus on right. purpose because I was I wanted okay. to show you dorms to diplomas. All right. So if you click on on this, it hyperlinks, and it brings up dorms to diplomas. Can you see this? Yes. Now this is telling who you huh. are. Now I want you to think. A little bit of demographic information. There's 630,000 households that fall into this segmentation profile. Average household size, 2.2. So uh -huh. most of these folks are roommates. Yes. All right. Median age, 21.6. Median household income, nothing. Yeah. Now, you know who this is? College students. This is Will Barron. Yeah. This is my son, Will Barron at UK. Yeah. He's 21.6 years old. He might be 21.8 <laughs> years old at this point. Uh -huh. He has two or three roommates, mm -hmm. right? He makes pretty much nothing, Yeah. right? Works at a restaurant as a server. Now, I'm going to read what they, how they describe this. On their own for the first time, dorms to diplomas residents are just learning about finance and cooking. Frozen dinners and fast food are common options. Shopping trips are sporadic because wow. they don't have any money. Mm -hmm. And preference, preferences for products are still being established. Mm. Many carry a balance on their credit cards so they can buy what they want now. Although school and part-time work take up many hours of the day, the remainder is usually filled with socializing and having fun with friends. Mm -hmm. They're looking to learn life lessons inside and outside of the classroom. This is the first online generation having had lifelong use of computers, the internet, and cell phones. Wow. That's quite a description. Now, that is not demographic information that's how they see the world right right their neighborhoods are a mix of dorms on and off campus housing etc cetera, etc cetera. their socioeconomic traits they often purchase trendy clothes on a budget yep their impulse buyers but all this stuff now if you're a uh let's just say you're a multifamily developer and you find a site you like and when you run the tapestry profile you see that one in five of the people that live in this area are students. And you're like, I should create student housing because there's so many of these people here. 
all of this information is going to help you design apartments that appeal to these people. Because you know that these are the type of people. It's not just there's X amount of people that live within five miles of here or a five-minute drive time or a 10-minute drive time or whatever we did. It's that they are these type of people. They see the world this way. Right. And if you're going to build student housing, like how to, just think through it for a second. How would that be different than if you were going to build a multifamily complex that was geared towards young families yeah well, how would how would you design the layouts of those apartments differently a very different it would be maybe more bunk beds there might be smaller rooms where you've got like if we're talking about like the design of the room yeah or is it yeah uh where you might have like a bed on top and a desk underneath the bed kind of thing the kitchen you could kind of see to your right um or maybe you got a living room space with the kitchen and then like two different rooms that might house multiple people, but they're not that big. Like, Yeah, if you were going to do student housing today, you would have a big community space. Yeah. That would have the, you know, the, the family room, the living space, the kitchen, all that. It's going to be generally pretty nice. Yeah. And you're probably going to have four bedrooms off this space okay. with two bathrooms. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And those four bedrooms are going to be exactly the same size. Yeah. Now, if you're building for small families, you're not designing it that way at all. That's right. And you're going to have one or two smaller bedrooms for the children. Right. Or a small office. And it's going to be... So, like, understanding who the people are psychographically can really inform what you build. Right. And, you know, if we were going to do a self-storage development in a space like this and one in five people are college students, I'm going to do a lot of smaller units. Mm -hmm. I might do my leasing different to try to capture them over the summer. I mean, there's all kinds of different things you could do if you understand the segmentation of the people in a geography. Yeah. Um, let me just show you one other example. I do want you to click on urban chic. Yep. Uh, in a whenever urban chic. Cause I'm just so because Urban Chic is like a stot, like a, like a clothing style. Um, so you it's mean just that clothing style. Yeah, there it is. So there's a million six households of these folks. Average household size two point four. Median age is just a little bit younger than me. Mm -hmm. Basically, in between me and you, uh -huh. and they make good money. All right, about one hundred and ten. Urban Chic residents are professionals that live a sophisticated, exclusive lifestyle. Ooh. Half of all households are occupied by married couple families, and thirty percent are singles. These are busy, well-connected, well-educated consumers, avid readers and moviegoers, environmentally active and financially stable. This market is a bit older, with a median age of forty-three years, and growing slowly but steadily. Mm. And more and if you scroll down here, it tells you a lot more information, like their income and net worth. Worth, race, and ethnicity. Oh, there's more. This is describing urban chic nationally at this point. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Right. So you compare. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the U.S. average here is in gray. So, you know, 10% of urban chic is Hispanic. But 18% of the United States is Hispanic. So that proportionately, there's less Hispanics in this urban chic segmentation than there is in the United States overall. Yeah. So you can see that kind of, here's your age distribution profile, um, their budget, how they spend their money. What's their occupation by earnings? A lot of people in management here, business and financial sales and related 66% mm -hmm. of urban chics own as opposed to rent. Mm -hmm. They shop at Trader Joe's, Costco or whole foods. Mm -hmm. They eat organic they travel extensively. They prefer to drive luxury imports. Sounds like they have big egos, you know? <laughs> I think uh, Urban Chic and dorms to, what was it called? Dorms to diplomas. Yeah. It's, I think you combine those two, you've got my household. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in between. Like we're trying to be Urban Chic, but, yeah. uh, you know, you got me weighing us down. Anyway. <laughs> so that is tapestry segmentation. That's wow. where you get at the psychographic profiles and that gives you some tremendous information yeah um and so a lot of retailers a lot of developers will try to get to that information right 
And, uh, you know, any real estate professional, A, should have some tool that allows them to get this in, to this information. Yeah. Site to do business isn't the only one. It's just the best one, in my opinion. Yeah. And Esri is by far, of all the demographic companies that I've ever heard of, like, they're the big giant gorilla. They're the ones with all the data. They're the gold standard. Just look at all these different reports that you can get. Yeah. Right? Just tremendous, tremendous amount of data. But the other thing you can do with, with the business analyst here is you can put that demographic information on the map. So if we wanted to do a color-coded map, we would go to create maps, go to color-coded, and we could... Um, you want to do a heat map with median household income? I would love to. Okay, let's do that. Click median household income. Um, so in this area, and I'll, I'll move some of this out so we can actually see the map here in a second. Okay. But the more yellow or light it is, the lower the median household income is, all the way up to the reddest of the red, which is about 200000 So let's clear this oh, stuff. Oh, I, 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 I bet I could tell wind directions based on this map. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe so now like with a are, map like this you can start to see growth patterns right or growth theory comes into you could you potentially could to, yeah, yeah. but if we scroll in here you can see that you know here's campus median household income on campus is about seventeen thousand. Mm -hmm. but if you go over here it's two hundred thousand my guess is that's a really nice neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. Uh, so that's just an example of, of doing a, a heat map. We could have chosen any piece of demographic information and put it on the map. Yeah. We could choose drink beer or wine in the last six months and put it on the map. You want to try it? Yeah. Okay. Let's change. Very interesting. We don't want median household income. I mean, I guess that'd come into handy for somebody who wants to open up a bar. I was like, why would you even want that information? But And another thing, too. Are restaurants considered retail? Bars and restaurants? Or is yeah. that? Yes, yeah, they're okay. in the retail category. So here's all the, let's just say, drink, beer, and wine. I think it'll just come up. Yep. Drink, beer, or ale. Last six months. Drank vodka last six months. Tequila <laughs> import. Import. Drank yeah. imported beer. Let's just do this. We'll click on that one. Let's do IPAs. Find out where the hipsters are. Yeah. So uh, 161 is low up to 1708. So now we should also see where campus is. Campus. <laughs> <laughs> has the highest concentration of drank beer in the last six months, yeah. which you would fully expect, right? Right, right. And my guess, here's that rich, rich neighborhood. It's on the low end yeah. of the scale. So these people have grown up a bit. Right, right. right? But What are they drinking? Tequila? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we did like uh, scotch, maybe right. that would be a yeah. something different. But this that's just an fun. example of how broad the amount of demographic data points that you can put on a map and just see where's the concentration. That's you know? incredible. If incredible. I were going to drop a, a hole-in-the-wall bar in Boulder, Colorado, I would not put it in this neighborhood right here. Right, right. I would put it real close to campus yep. or maybe up here or you know some of these other, other places. All right. right. Could you like select beer drinkers... And the household income and see them both at the same time. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So browse all variables, drink beer. Let's put those back on here. Okay. And then we'll just add it's a like variable. Filters. Yeah. Okay. Go I'm back what here. That does to colors. Let's go to income, median household income. Let's add that. All right. And now if you scroll down here. Oh, look. Now we got some zits. Okay, so what they did is drank beer is color-coded. Okay. All right? And median household income are the circles. So the biggest circle over here. And every time you move over a space, this one, a uh, decent amount. You know what? Let me get rid of my site. All right, now we can see that a little better. So just in the circle itself, okay? So this circle, big circle, lots of income, 
But the color coding of the circle tells you not a lot of beer drinkers. Yeah. On campus, the circle is very, very small. Teeny tiny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very dark, yeah. right? So lots of, lots of beer drinkers there. Wow. And so if we're looking for where is like a decent sized circle with some pretty good, uh, like, all right, median household income, 126,000. That's, that's a lot. And you also have a decent amount of beer drinkers. Yeah. Right. But this also seems to indicate that the more beer drinkers you have, the less you make. Isn't that interesting? At least in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. So anyway, that's how you can put pieces of demographic stuff on a map and get a really good feel for something. And if you want to scroll out, you can just scroll out a little bit. Ooh. Now here. This makes commercial real estate fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This, I mean, this information would be great if we are, say, we're moving to Boulder just to see what kind of neighborhoods we want to check out. Yeah. You know, re, like, it just. Now, you want to see something really, really cool? Okay. Yeah. yeah. If this, this is, wasn't already. This is the, this is the simple, mm-hmm. the simple, easy stuff. All right. We're just going to stay here in Boulder, Colorado. Let's go out to census tracks. All right. So we're going to Boulder, Denver. Okay. Right now, yeah. we're just perusing, having fun. You're showing me what all it can do. Yeah, I'm just showing you but some. But when we stuff. go to do a market analysis, we'll have more of a specific. Yeah, we'll be trying th- to do some specific stuff. Yeah. Now, let's do a smart map search. Okay. So, what this allows me to do is, let's say we're a, uh, a company, and we want to relocate to Boulder, Colorado, and we want to locate our office space as close to the highest density of our desired employee as possible. Oh, okay. All right. So I want to put my office as close to the people that I actually want to hire as possible. In the profile of the people I want to hire, let's say it's they're between age 25 and 34. Let's say they make about 75, maybe 50 to $75,000 a year, and they have graduate degrees. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and they work in tech. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we can create a demographic cocktail of those three ingredients Uh and just create our own and put it on a map. And then it'll tell us where the highest concentration of that is. So let's go to browse all variables. Now we want to go down here to the bottom and create a custom variable. We want advanced custom variable. So we'll click on that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find these data points and we're going to throw them down here into uh, the mix, the shaker. Okay. All right. And then we're going to create our own little cocktail. So Shake what was the up. first one? Um, age 25 to 34. Let's see what that gives us. Household. Uh, let's do just 2023. Let's do income by age. So, all right, here's our people. Average household income, 50 to 75,000, age 25 to 34. All right, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. So, we're going to add selected variable. And now you see it down here. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I want to add this. I want to combine it with the next variable that I'm going to put down there. Okay, great. So let's go back to categories here and let's say, what was the next one? Graduate degree, graduate professional degree. Okay. That's what I want. Yeah. Okay. So let's add that selected variable down here and we're going to add that as well to the industry they're in. And so instead of just typing it in, you could also search for it this way and look for is it industry. It said businesses. Yeah, that might have been what I needed, but let's just do technology and see what we come up with. Yeah. Industry manufacturing. Love technology. Not as much as you, you see. Still, I love technology. Always and forever. Always and forever. Did I miss it? Name that movie. Viewer. Okay, because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, no, no, that wasn't for you. I know you're paying attention. I'm just engaging them while you're... (laughs) As if I couldn't cut this out. We met in a chat room. All right, let's do information instead of tech, because I think that one... 
No, I love can surely boom. All right, 2023 industry, they're in the information industry. All right, so All right. that's who we're looking for. Now, we've got our three. We're going to click add. And we're going to add it to the map. Yep. Sorry. Do I'm going to click save. Sales. Yep. Now, it's going to put this on the map. Click apply. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. Now we've got we're in, we got Denver all the way to Fort Collins, Boulder's over here. All right, but let's zoom in closer to Boulder. We're gonna take this little slider, and I'm gonna slide it from the left to the right. And as the lower concentrations of our custom variable, they're gonna drop off the map until we're left with the one section left. Ready? Yes. Oh. 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 Ah. South Boulder. Oh. This, yeah, I saw it on the right. See a little bit on the right there. Yeah, there's that one on the right that's throwing me off. But if we go to this block group, there's 983 people that fit our custom variable. Wow. Right 25 there. 25 to 34, the graduate degree in information technology who make between 50 and 75,000 a year. Yeah. And if those are the people that I want to hire, I'm going to be looking in this area right here for office space. Wow. So that they have a very short commute time to work at my very awesome company. Yes. That's some pretty cool stuff right there. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I, it, it seems like the trick here, it's almost like using chat GPT of you've got to know what you're looking for or what to look for, especially with there's so much information. So the more that you give it or know what to give it, the more you'll have the best data you're, you're looking at, right? Yeah, totally. And look, if you're a broker, imagine you're working with somebody on site selection and let's say their office. What should you be asking them? Yeah. What's, what's the main thing that's going to help you decide where to put your office? Like, where do you want it? Is the main thing where the boss lives? That's what it used to be. The CEO mm. of these big companies would move headquarters closer to where they wanted to live or where they do live. Yeah. New CEO, new headquarters. Right. They'd move. Yeah. Now it's so competitive to get quality employees mm -hmm. that the biggest function is where do the employees that I want, where are they? And we mm. wanna we wanna locate close to them. Right. All right. So if that's the case and you're working with somebody, then you need to be able to ask the questions to pull this information out of them. That's right. Like describe for me your ideal employee. What kind of degree do they have? Uh -huh. Right? How old are they? Are they male or female? We could have added that, male or female. Mm -hmm. We could have you know, what do they make? What are they you can build that custom, and then you can stink in. I mean, I could do that in front of my client and say, this is where we need to look. Right. Now, when we do a market analysis, are we going to do a little bit of role playing where I am that person you're asking questions? What we do, when we do a market analysis, we ought to narrow it down and say we're, uh, um, you know, we're either a retailer or multifamily developer or something so yeah. that we look at that market from that lens. Otherwise, it would probably be too broad. Yeah. I wonder even whoever wins the drawing, if we reach out to them and ask them a few questions, mm -hmm. you know, and see, and see, is there something specific? Make sure or, we give them what they want. Why not? Why not? You know, and if they respond, great. And if not, we'll make it up. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. like role playing. Now I will just say this. Okay. I've just shown you about 1% of what's possible with this. Yeah. I mean, it's we've just scratched the surface. Yeah, I can see. So, I mean, we can do um, we can do a suitability analysis where we put five different sites, 10, 20 different sites on the map and have the business analyst rank the sites based on the demographics. Oh, wow. And say, this is, we want, uh, we care about who's drank beer in the last six months, who's, you know, income, rent, all that stuff. And it can... 
rank the sites for us based on the demographics. Pretty right. sweet. This void analysis, I can say, okay, I want you to take a look at, say, South Frederica retail area. Yeah. Take a look at that, right? Now, compare it to 54. Right. And tell me what is missing on 54 based on what's out, like actual, where, what are the retailers that are missing out there? Right. That are, and that can help you do a void analysis. Right. It can, it can do, oh, I mean, it's just right. incredible. I mean, you can even can do. do it from Owensboro to Evansville of like, where are the oh, dollars yeah. going? Get out of my face. <laughs> what a terrible thing to say to a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, stop getting so close to my mouth. Um, yeah. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> I can cut that. I was uh, yeah, I'll cut that. Uh, I, was, I was like, should I do it? Yeah, but you can see what, what uh, money is bleeding into another town to show you like, hey. Mm-hmm. And you know what you call that? that? Yes, but I said bleeding because I forgot. Leakage. Leakage. Yeah. <laughs> Leakage. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that would make you laugh. <laughs> yeah. There's some words are just great. <laughs> Leakage is one of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. All uh, right. Well, all look, right. Um, for the sake of time, I say we wrap this up. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, we can put this away because we is have. fascinating. Oh, it is fascinating. So when we do a market analysis, we have to quantify demand and do some of this stuff. We also have to quantify supply. That's hard. That's mm. harder to do. Yeah. But I've got another tool for that. And uh, maybe we'll do an es- episode on the supply side, kind of where you can get that data. Great. And then maybe after that we can kind of put them together. And I won't have to explain as much sure. while I'm doing the market analysis. And this is perfect. Like this, these are the episodes leading up to mm-hmm. the market analysis. Speaking of which... Should I grab that hat? Yeah, let's grab the let's hat. Let's do it. Let's see what we're going to do it on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a few weeks. You've given us your things. Uh, you made your comments of the thing. I'm going to mix them up real good, and then Here Bo is going to do the honors. Yeah. You do the honors. You want me to do the honors? Okay. You do all the work. Have some fun. Okay. If you pull J's, we're putting it back. Scott Carlin, Melbourne, Tedesville. Titusville. Titusville. <laughs> that uh, should Palm work. Bay, Florida. That should work. That should work. Yeah. Scott, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. And let us know. We'll, we'll try to reach out to you, but let us know kind of what your specialty is. Yeah. And then we'll try to hone in on. Let's get a dialogue going. Um, I'll respond to his uh, his comment. Okay. And then see how to best uh, talk to him from there. Okay, cool. All right. Congratulations, Scott. We'll keep this open. It, this might not be the only market analysis we do. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, and if you all, like, love it, you know, uh, we'll definitely do it again. Mm-hmm. All right. Pop quiz? Yeah! All right, pop quiz. Yeah, I, that's yeah. just what was going it's through a, my head. <laughs> it's been uh, a while. Yeah. It's been a while. Okay. We took a look at the site to do business, mm-hmm. all right, specifically the business analyst function uh, within site to do business. Mm-hmm. What is the demographic company that this is built on? Esri. Esri, that is correct. Uh-huh. E-S-R-I, Esri. E-S-R-I. All right. all right, question two. We talked a little bit about statistical analysis. I didn't call it that, but we talked about mean and median. Mm-hmm. Explain to me the difference between mean and mm-hmm. median. So mean would be your average. Good. And median would be the middle, right? So instead of taking everything and finding your average, mm-hmm. you're you're more getting an accurate look at um, when you look at the middle. You're getting more of an accurate look, especially if you're in a community with Warren Buffett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Accurate's probably not. And, yeah. Because, like, an average is an accurate average of the data points that you have. But what happens is if you have outliers, it can skew. Mm-hmm. So the average is, I mean, it's telling you what the average is. That would be accurate with that data set. Fair enough. Yeah. But if you have a few outliers, it could really skew that data. Mm-hmm. Like our example, the median was 
what? 64,000. But the average was, was like 130. Yeah, something almost double. Right. So it was really, really out of whack. Yeah. So it's what median tells you, which is that's the center point of the data, half or higher, half or lower. Mm-hmm. That was 64,000 or whatever right. it was. But the word, the wor- yeah. I got no sleep last night. <laughs> yeah. I well. ate 12 bananas. <laughs> I'll show it to one. I'll show it to you. You're not going to poop for a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, potassium, okay. though, I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah, that's true. All right. Question number three. Um, we mentioned this isn't the question, but what drives demand for space? People. People. What's the demand driver for retail specifically? Yes. Income. Income. Yeah. And if you wanted to be even more correct, it would be disposable income. Disposable income. So after income. taxes and savings, we didn't say it that way earlier, but, but I, it's actually I the disposable. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's question. Right. That was question three. Question four then is what drives specifically? What's the demand driver for residential? Yes. I don't want to look at my notes. It's uh, not people. It is... I mean, it's not population. Pop, no, um, I'll tell you what it is. Um, what was it? Were total population? It is total population, but like, what's the metric that you actually look at? You don't look at how oh, many households. People, households. Households. That's what I was going yeah. for. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. households. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Nice. You're doing well. Okay. Question five. Question five. What is it called? In the business analyst, when you put a demographic data point on a map based on colors. Heat map? A heat map. Heat map. A heat yeah. map. Yeah. Nice. Right. Yeah. Well, very good. Yes. I thought but you were going to ask thought, me. Ooh, I've got a bonus question. Yeah. How do you say right and left in Arabic? With the right, left is like something like I'm sorry. I just meant sorry. Yesar. Yesar. Yeah. And right is uh, going to f*** you up. (laughs) 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 It is uh, uh, going to swing. I'm going to. Nah. You mean. You mean. You mean and yesar. You mean and yesar. You mean and yes. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I thought you were going to ask the question, or I was hoping you'd ask the question, a formal versus functional. Ooh, that would have been a good one. Yeah. So tell me, what's the difference between a formal geography and a functional geography? Well, formal, the man tells you, you know. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. They uh, say. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. the other one is you tell. Mm -hmm. As a business analyst, you tell it. Yeah, you decide. Yeah, you Mm -hmm. decide. You make the call. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Sweet. Well done, brother. All right. Thank you very much. Let's do some shout outs. Okay. We got some shout outs. Um, If you're watching on YouTube right now, please hit subscribe. Ding that little bell. Uh, We will shout out a few comments every week that we see on YouTube. Um, And if you're on, and please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. It helps spread this to the people uh, who could really use it. And we really appreciate it. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It helps us out a great deal. It's a small thing. And if you leave a review on Apple, you 100% will get a shout out. Yes. Where your comments might not. Okay. So uh, from the mindset of an investor, got, hey guys, love the podcast. This is from Scott Carlin. I'd like to submit my market consideration for market. Oh, we did that. He won. Yeah. He's the one who got it. Scott, you're the winner. Love the shout out for Nate Worthen. Mm -hmm. He was one of the instructors for my read more. Well, not only what Nate did. Uh, Because we were talking about Nate on the last episode. Right. Because uh, he was the one who told me that I said idiot too much. Oh, yeah. He was my co-instructor. Your hype man. He's my hype man. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. So he sent me a message and and thanked me for the shout out and then shared the post, shared Monday's episode on LinkedIn for us. Oh, nice. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Yep. 
So, a uh, little shout out to Nate as well. Shout out to Scott Carlin and the winner. Uh, we got Francisco Chan- Sanchez on the same same episode. I got into this business to immerse myself in the CRE world and get closer to recognizing what a good deal looks like. Being new to CRE, I'm not dealing with investors, but rather with startup business owners and owner users. Mm -hmm. So shout out. Thanks for the comment. Do you have anything to say to that? I get it. And, and that's a, it can be a great business. Like some people look down on that kind of stuff, you know, smaller leasing type. Yeah. But no, I mean, you're helping people find the right space so that the dream they have can actually come to fruition or thrive in that space. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it's incredibly rewarding work. So yes. Yeah. Great. And we occasionally have an episode that is geared towards brokers, even though this is mainly investor mm-hmm. podcasts, but maybe we'll talk about, talk about that soon. Dana Truman uh, on the art of voicemail. I'm going to start holding a hockey stick while I stalk the floor and make calls. <laughs> nice. Yep. Awesome. I've got a bat. Dana's yep. got a hockey stick. I got Good. a deck of cards. All right. Last one in the comments from uh, the best tech situation ever. Laura to hate here. 4684. Great episode. Thank you for all the juicy info. I intended Bo's CCIM class and these episodes seem like a consistent con continuate consistent continuation of everything we learn in ccim i appreciate appreciate you guys keep up the good work all right laura thank you so much that means a lot and then we've got two new reviews did i send those to you yet i think i did what p-a-i p-a-i would that be pay pay or pi 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 i have no idea um from pay pay or pi pi uh, 131. I'm a rookie in the CRE business, and after listening to many episodes, I found myself having a good direction on what to work on and how to be a resourceful professional professional until I collect the years of experience. You guys touch on subjects that are relevant and help me leverage my current skills, even though I'm new. I've heard of Bo before joining his CCIM, CCIM class by fellow CCIM students that recommended him as an instructor, and I'm happy I got to attend and learn from him and Francisco. Hashtag no hate for Ukrainian criminals. Oh, I remember that I story. I know exactly who that is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These podcasts <laughs> are gold, very entertaining, Walker. funny, and easy to stay engaged throughout the episode. Keep it up. That's a fantastic review. Thank you so much, Pepe. Oh, wait, Pepe. you know what? Huh? I'm not sure. I think I know who that is, but it could be one of two people. Yeah. It's either... The person who you looked at, who I looked at, who told me that, what do I look like a Ukrainian? Oh uh, yeah, which would, caught me off guard and embarrassed me. Or it's her friend, who was supposed to be in that class. I think she got in a car wreck, couldn't oh. make it, and so she came to the class in Austin. Oh, yeah. So it's probably one of those two, but it's got to be either way. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you so much. That this is these are great. And then from uh, Fernando at Miami. Uh, again, left us a review on Apple Podcasts. Great podcast for commercial real estate agents and investors. As a CCIM, I find the content is very relevant. Really enjoy the interaction and episode recaps. Thank you. All right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, that's you awesome. Would, Thank you. Do you want to say anything about the newsletter and uh, your webinars? Sure. Um, no new information on the webinars, but they're coming. Uh, it's going to be called Currently Commercial that I'm doing with uh, the CCIM Institute, Mm -hmm. trending topics in today's commercial real estate. It's gonna start off with a bunch of uh, of information about AI and how we can apply it to our business. So I'm really excited about that. And then I continue to invite our listeners to subscribe to our newsletter. Our free weekly newsletter. Mm Subscribe.wgbaron.com. And it goes goes out on Thursday, delivers, podcast episode to you every week Mm -hmm. along with some other great curated content for business and commercial real estate yes uh, and i invite you to join us there as soon as there's a location to or a place to go to to sign up for those webinars which anybody could go to Mm -hmm. um we'll put that in newsletter uh right away yep yep uh congratulations to scott carlin we'll reach out to you so take a look at it and uh yeah we'll see you next monday all right All right. Love you, brother. Love you, man. Bye, Alice. Bye. Bye.